Welcome to Classroomology 101. I'm your teacher, Kate, and today we're going to be learning about emergency subplans. So if you already follow me, you know that I've done a video on this once before. However, the subplans that I had prepared would only cover me for one day. And unfortunately, this year I found out that um, I needed to be covered for more days than one day. And what happens is if you are not prepared for that, your coworkers are going to be the ones that are filling in the blanks for you. It's also super stressful as a sub to come in and there's not anything. I mean, that it's terrifying, let alone unless you know the kids, because you are already worried that the, you're hoping the day is going to go well and that the kids are going to behave and that you're going to meet expectations. So if the teacher doesn't leave enough items for the sub, that's also hard on them. So I've decided to expand on my sub plans. Now there's a couple reasons why you need emergency sub plans. So I keep all of my sub plans in this folder here or in this file folder here. You can see it's quite full. And that's because I have them separated out by Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. The other thing is I have a sub binder here. And the reality is I have so many different rules and expectations and procedures and things like that, that it really needed its own binder. And I'm working on changing a few items here and there within my binder. And once I do that, I'll be putting it up on TPT and I'll be doing a video here so you can kind of see what it is and how you would use it. It's important to have not only your lesson plans, but then just kind of how your classroom runs. So I would suggest to you that you have your lesson plans and then you have a sub binder. What you're going to do is every day before you leave, you're going to put out the corresponding folder. So if you're leaving on Monday and you know you're not going to be there on Tuesday, you leave the folder out. If you're leaving work on Monday and you have every intention of coming to work on Tuesday, still put out that Tuesday folder. You never know what's going to happen um, once you go home. Anything could happen. So I always just put out the corresponding day on my desk. I'll usually just leave it here and then like, you know, right here um, next to this, or I might even just say sub plans or something like that, and then put the binder right next to it. It's important that you do these things so that you are prepared. Trust me, there's nothing worse than waking up um, or going to bed sick and knowing, oh my God, I've got to make sub plans. So this little system is really truly going to help you. Now, because I'm doing this handheld, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video. I'm going to take out the sub plans. I'm going to lay them all out. I'm not going to lay the sub binder out only because it's not, it needs to be revamped. So I'll, I'll get to that later. So here we go. Okay, so this is what they look like, each folder, and obviously I would not leave all these folders out on the desk. If I was going home on Friday, regardless if I was coming in the next day or not, I would leave out the Monday sub plans. That's because when you leave, you never know what's going to happen from the time that you leave to the time that you're supposed to come back. Something could happen to someone in your family or to you. You could wake up not feeling well. You could go to bed not feeling well. And again, the last thing you want to think about is those sub plans. There are also those times where you get so busy at work that you don't have time to make sub plans. So you could actually, if you were really in a pinch, you could pull from one of your sub days and then you don't have to worry about, oh God, what am I going to plan for tomorrow? So let's take a look at Monday. Now I'm not gonna go through all the days because quite frankly, that would be a massively large video. So here's Monday. And what it looks like is this. So on this side, even though I told you I have a sub binder that I'll, I would be leaving out, um, the reality is, is I know that not every sub is going to feel that they have the time to read that or even want to be bought. It's a lot of writing. So I've kind of just spotlighted some important information here, kind of how the classroom works, what I expect, things like that. And then it goes on to another page here, right? 
And then I have over here the lessons. And the reason that I like this format by having it separated your subplans is that you don't have to worry about scheduling. Like on some days this happened and other days that happened. And it's really hard if you just do it as like one general statement, like here's the subplans, you know, use it on any particular day. It makes the scheduling aspect hard. Whereas if you do it by the specific day, you actually can put in the schedule and it's less confusing for everyone. Now, I'm not going to go through all of my sub plans because um, I've got some ideas on here that I actually am going to be selling on TPT eventually um, that are my own. So, you know, one of the things here is it says math lessons. So I, at the end of the day, so I work at two desks and my front desk is my main desk. And that's where I house a lot of like my teacher additions and the read aloud and things like this. So when I'm done for the day, I actually will bring those items, like the math practice book, things like that. I'll bring all those back and put them on the desk next to the folder and the binder. And then they have all the materials they need. So obviously, something that I'm using every day, I'm not going to be putting into this folder here because I need to be to access it. So that's why just bringing it over at the end of the day is very simple. So um, we've got our, you know, day, how it goes. And then I actually here, I'll just give you a snippet of what every day looks like. This is important to me. Having optional assignments. Occasionally when you're a sub, things either don't work out right or, you know, maybe they go too quickly through something and then they're scrambling, like they have, they need something else to do. So one of my coworkers, she has a book that she bought called Face Math, and we use it all the time. Kids love it. It's, um, I don't really know where you buy it, but I'm sure you could just like Amazon Face Math. I mean, she's the lady who wrote them has a bunch of them, and the kids love them. So I always like to throw in an optional assignment. Um, that way, if, they, if they're, you know, running ahead or they need to switch gears, they've got something to work with. Um, <clears throat> so this is kind of how I work. I do outlines, as you can see. Now, the other thing that, and I just got this off of um, Pinterest, and I don't remember who it was, but I like having the subs fill out for me, um, you know, just a little bit of information. Who was good? How did the day go? Like, what did they try to get away with? Um, you know, and if they need more room, they can write it in the back. In fact, I always, when I come back after being out, I always ask the kids, like, come on, be honest, what'd you do? I always want to hear what they got away with, you know? Um, because kids always get away with something when there's a sub. Doesn't matter how good the sub is. So this is an example of face math. You actually have to put in all of the equations. When you buy it, it's just blank with the exception of these. So you write in the answers, right? And you write in the equation and then this other part here, let me get a little closer so you can see. So like for example, seven times four, we wrote that in and then I wrote in 28 and I wrote in 24 and the rest is written by Kristen DeWitt is the author's name. And then on the back, here, so there's actually, there's a, a this is double sided, the, the second side you can't see. And then when they're done and they've all solved it, so having an answer key for the sub is important. And then um, also what the picture should look like. So this is what the final product should look like. And if the kids did it right, then theirs will also look like that. Um, the next thing that I have the kids do is something that I call illustration retail. Because this is something that I'm planning to sell on TPT, um, I am unfortunately not going to show you how it works. You're just gonna have to be looking out for a video coming up and then head over to my TPT store, which currently only has one item in it and it's a freebie. So definitely follow me on TPT um, and support me because I have a lot of really amazing ideas coming up. I'm gonna just do this for a second. Um, and then the final one, which is not my own idea, but one that the kids love, 
is you read a book to the kids and then they have to tell what the five most important words were in that book. So if it was like the giving tree, most of us know this story. They could write words like um, caring, selfless, friendship, and they would come up with five words. And then what they would do is on the back, so this is one group would get this one, one group would get this one, you know, you have to cut them up. And then on the back of this paper, what they would do is they would write down um, <clears throat> the one word and they would explain why it's important and kind of where it came up in the story. So it really forces the kids to think, to synthesize their thoughts, and then to be able to apply their thoughts and connect those thoughts to the story. So then after that, that's plenty of work for the day. Um, and then this sub would be able to just to leave me notes. And then when I come in on the next day, um, I would keep Monday out. And before I left on Monday, I would look to see what was used and what needs to be replaced. So I would still keep, you know, the five word book review, but I would say read a different book instead right? I would still keep my illustration retail, but I would put a different book in there. So that way it's ready to go for the next time. And there's no repeat, um, like repeat assignments or lessons. The final thing that I wanted to spotlight for you is that you should have some options for subs to do. While as a sub, it's nice when there's a prep time and you don't have anything to do, unfortunately, I really like my subs to get some things done for me. So one of the things, and I don't really have anything in here, is I'll leave like a copy folder. So if I have anything that I know needs copying, I mean, I guess I could have this copied, um, I'll put it in there with notes on how I want it copied. Um, because if they have free time and I mean, you need copies made, why not have them just make them for you? And then the final thing is, is even though in every day I've left, you know, some optional assignments, sometimes they still need more. So usually what I'll do is I'll just put a couple different like worksheets, practice worksheets. They don't have to be math. They could, you know, be whatever you like. So there's just a couple extra little ones in there. Um, so... Now you know why you should have emergency sub plans. Yes, it is a ton of work to set up, but in the long run, you are setting yourself up for success for the entire year. And so if you like this idea, please let me know down below. If you are planning on using this idea and you have some questions, go ahead and ask those. I'll do my best to answer. And if you already use them and you have some extra like tips or tricks that you want to add, um, I'd love to hear from you. So um, if you haven't already, hit that like button, do that for me now. I would really appreciate that. And don't forget to subscribe. I would love to have more subscribers and definitely share this video. Have a good one, everyone. Bye.